Each one of us is born with a legend waiting to be birthed. Evolution is upon us. We're about to reinvent what this world is. We don't have a lot of time this morning, so I say let's dive right in. <laughs> but I'm going to start with this tree, an olive tree that I met earlier this year. She was a seedling at about the same time that Magellan started his voyage around the world, the first time that humans had made the circumnavigation of this planet, 500 years ago. At the time, so many people insisted that Earth was the center of the universe. But now we know we're just a part of this vast universe of beautiful places, but no place like home. Fast forward to 50 years ago, when the young William Anders, an astronaut, circumnavigated the moon, along with his fellow astronauts, and he took this image that transformed the way we look at ourselves, Earthrise. It set in motion a new way of thinking about who we are, where we've come from, where we might be going. And we still need to be asking that question because some people want to take off and go to Mars, leave Earth behind. I mean, I'm all for going to Mars, and I'd like to make my list um, of those who should go. <laughs> you have some candidates. <laughs> it's probably a one-way trip, but anyway, we will make it there someday if we make peace with the blue planet, our home. But it's the only place in the universe that really has the potential for maintaining everything that we care about, whatever that is. <laughs> Life, security, <laughs> prosperity, your health, we have to take care of the systems, the natural world that makes that possible. So, I've had a chance during my lifetime to dive in thousands of hours exploring the blue part of the planet. It was just almost 50 years ago when I had a chance to be an aqua babe, an aqua bell. I mean, the guys who participated in the tech type program of living underwater were called aquanauts, but the women's team, <laughs> well, we were the aquanauties. <laughs> I've had a chance to live underwater now on 10 different occasions, and it used to be you got to keep the guys over here and the girls over there, but now, just as going in space or here in this auditorium, you know, men and women can get along, <laughs> and the opportunity to use the ocean as a place to truly explore and get to uh, stay underwater. Like Jane Goodall spent 15 years studying one species, chimpanzees in Africa, and got to know them very well. But to go in the sea to spend long periods of time, you have to sort of package yourself in a way that protects you from pressure, from cold, from the things, well, and gives you air <laughs> in that hostile environment. It's hostile to us, but that's where most of life on Earth actually exists, out there in the ocean. I've been privileged to work with engineers to start three companies, actually, to build equipment, to gather uh, information, to take ourselves down into the ocean. We're still scratching at the surface as divers or as surfer dudes. I love surfer dudes going out there, riding the waves. But what's under the waves? Or those who go out in their big boats, what's under the boat? To get there, you know, we have the technology. We just need the will to develop the technologies that will take us deep. The average depth of the ocean is only two and a half miles the maximum seven miles, 11 kilometers. We fly high in the sky eating lunch, <laughs> taking naps, watching movies. But to get seven miles down or even two and a half miles down, it's a pretty big deal. I've been privileged to at least get partway into the ocean. 
I've been halfway, or at least the average depth of the ocean, about where the Titanic rests. But I long to see little submarines like Hertz Retisub or Avis or you name it, a place where any of us could go and, you know, get our little means of transportation and then go deep. The ocean, it's not just rocks and water, although from the surface it looks as though that's pretty much what the ocean is. But when you get in the ocean, you can see the ocean is alive. And it's a good thing, too, because it's a living ocean that generates oxygen. The little green guys that churn out oxygen grab carbon dioxide like trees. These are the forests of the ocean. And they give rise to the great hordes of animal life. Most of them, really small. But they do the heavy lifting in terms of capturing energy and passing along through the great ocean food webs that shape the chemistry of our blue planet. These amazing creatures that together feed the fish <laughs> and the whales and the birds and some of us as well. We are just at the edge of beginning to understand the nature of how the ocean works. We've only seen maybe 10%. We've only mapped about 10% of the ocean with the same degree of accuracy that we have for the moon or Mars. The great thing about watching a food web in action is to watch it and not be a part of it, like my predecessor here on the stage. Oh. But, you know, we take ourselves into their world. They are at home there. We are really newcomers in the ocean. And I have had such pleasure in recent times introducing people to the ocean, students, sustainable seas expeditions. We had students from around the world, around the country, and some from outside the country, scientists exploring the coastline of this country using little submarines, five-year project with the National Geographic, sustainable seas expedition, and now morphing that into Mission Blue with hope spots all over the world where we're taking people to explore the ocean, to nominate places they know and love and care about, and try to get them protected, like national parks on the land. Hope spots large enough to save and restore the blue heart of the planet. The planet, as you probably know, is in trouble. Why? Because of what we're putting into the atmosphere, the carbon dioxide that's warming the planet, it's causing ice to melt, giving polar bears and penguins at the other end of the planet a hard time. But it's not just bad news for polar bears, it's bad news for all of us that we are altering the nature of nature, changing the chemistry of the planet, changing the temperature of the planet. And the third big thing that we're doing, we are annihilating the wildlife on the land but also in the sea, sometimes deliberately with big nets that really are taking more from the ocean than the ocean can recover from that taking, but also the warming of the planet is bad news for coral reefs, bad news for us. It's also what we're putting into the ocean. Oh my goodness, when I was a child, plastics were just beginning to come into existence. Now, the ocean is just awash in our junk, our debris. It's there. We can see it. I know surfers see it. I know those of you who go out in boats on the surface see it. As a diver, I have seen it. In a submarine, I've seen it two and a half miles beneath the surface of the ocean. But it's also what we're taking out of the ocean. I used to think that, you know, I had to look out for the sharks, and yes, you do, a bit. But mainly, sharks have to look out for us because we take hundreds of millions of sharks. We've taken 90% of the sharks from the ocean because of a luxury taste for shark fin soup, shark steak, whatever it is. The same is true with tunas. They too are in sharp decline because we, new predators in the ocean, are taking far more than they can be replenished with swordfish. 
you name the favorite fish that you like to see swimming with lemon slices and butter, huh? I suggest you go see them swimming in the ocean, get to see them with new eyes, and maybe they won't taste quite the same on the plate once you get to know them. We used to think that whales were primarily good for something you know, to be turned into products, hmm, barrels of oil, pounds of meat, but we've changed our thinking. We need to continue that change in the way we think about creatures that share the planet with us, know them, know their faces, their personality, get to know the ocean in new ways. We have a chance on our watch, thinking whether it's 50 years ago or 500 years ago, we have an opportunity if we listen to the ocean and talk with the people who can make a difference. Use your mighty skills as communicators, as marketers, to market the ocean. The ocean, the planet, nature needs good friends who can help protect and restore what we have lost for the sake of the whales, for the sake of birds such as this bird named Wisdom, who began flying about the same time I began diving in the 1950s. Where are we going to be 50 years from now? What is the world we want that you want? You have a chance. We have a chance to use our mighty powers, superpowers that our predecessors could only dream about knowing what we know and using it to make sure that we whales, tunas, sharks, and albatrosses have a place to live for into the future. Thank you.